Hello, I'm Gordon Lawson, Futures Rep for the syrup board manufacturers on the Eastern Seaboard. And today I'm going to run you through our increasingly popular one-shot installation kit. This is the kit that we use on our long box. We call them strong boxes because it is the strongest box on the market for single fins and long boards, SUPs, short boards. The eight inch box has become super popular with everyone as well with their two plus one fin configurations. One feature that we also included in the fin box this year is a curved top. Bottom's flat, but then we added some curve on the top to compensate for the extra tail rocker that people are putting in performance long boards and SUPs and so on. Okay, so when you get your kit from Fiberglass Florida and you open it up, you're gonna see a few things in there. First thing you'll see is a dummy fin. We're gonna be using this later when we actually install the fin to make sure that it's upright and perfectly set. You got spacers, so when we set the box, after we set it with the dummy fin, that it won't collapse on you, it'll hold the shape so the fins fit in nice and, and firm. Our one-shot bit, which is a half-inch shank, really well-thought bit that holds up year after year. Ricky Carroll goes through maybe one of these every five, six years, and he's cutting them all the time, so we're really pleased with that bit. We have our jig plate, which is important to be rather large for doing longboard stuff. And then we have our target. Then our target, we line up our fin marks for either eight inch or the 10 and three quarters. And it's something people have asked me about, what does this dowel do? Well, this is what you use the dowel for. And it'll be for truing in your router. Depending on the router, the one we're gonna be using today is my Ryobi variable speed that we sell here. You can pick them up at Fiberglass Florida pretty much anywhere, any hardware store. But I'll show you the, the, the value of this router over other ones when we go into the shaping room. But again, the pin, you would remove your bit and you'll set your router in there so you can make your adjustments. And it even has the adjustment for the eight inch. So you just put it on there like it's your router bit and you can adjust all your measurements out. And then I would mark it for my eight inch with a Sharpie so you can always come back to that mark. A few shims in there if you have some double concave or maybe maybe a bonzer bottom or something so you kind of have to adjust. So there's two thicker shims and two thinner and that's just for the guys that really like to dial them in so they're just perfectly cut. So next we'll be going into the shaping room where we're actually going to do a cut and I'm going to show you how I do it and you can uh, figure out your best methods. Okay so today we're going to be cutting the single box on this 7.0. I call Master Blaster. This is just a kind of a retro round tail single fin short board for my buddy DJ. He loves these things and he loves his single fins, so today we'll be cutting his board. So we're going to be cutting in the foam today, so we want to make sure we have a good rack system. These are nice and padded and cushioned, so we don't want any dents on the board. So we're going to lay it on there and kind of get our positioning where we know our single box is going to go. Get the board level, and then it's always nice to put a little weight on the board. We don't want it flying off the rack. Here's our jig plate. Comes with good padding on it. It's always kind of nice to keep it clean and everything so you don't have the extra dust from the last board you cut. And then I'm actually just going to drop it on here. And this is when I grab my target that we went through before from the install kit. It'll have nose and tail, and that's important. So definitely look at your target. So I have the mark here set at eight and a half inches. So I'm just gonna slide this up till it hits right on that mark. And then it's just lining up as close you can your line with your stringer. And once you feel like it's really nice and set perfect, just remove your target and we're ready to cut. So the router we'll be using today, the two horsepower Peak Ryobi plunge router. It's called a plunge router because you can actually plunge the cut. The one feature I really prefer on this is the slow start.
Some rattles will jump as soon as you turn them on. This one's a nice slow start, so you don't have to worry about it moving your jig and shifting around and having a bad cut to start with. Also, another really cool feature is you can change the speeding. That's A. I prefer to start off with the slowest speed to make sure I get my cut nice and true, and then we can speed it up and go quicker if we have to. Okay, so a lot of questions about where to mark the single fin. Where do you want to put it? Well, since this board's just going to be a straight single fin, I actually measured it eight and a half from the tail. Now, if my buddy DJ wanted side bites or leads, little twin fins or, or the little side bites, then I would probably move it back a little bit more. But I feel like he's at least going to run an eight and a half, nine inch fin. So I want to give him enough room for the rake of the fin if he likes one that's more raked out or, or whatever he prefers. So eight and a half is where I'm marking this one for a seven foot board. Super important to wear a mask. This is polyfoam. It's going to cause a lot of little dust and I don't want to breathe it. And um, I get my mask. I can get a whole pack from Fiberglass Florida. They're only about four or five bucks and these things save you in the long run from getting foam in your lungs, emphysema, whatever. So I'm, I'm a big candidate of these masks. And I'm also going to wear ear protection because we're going to be cutting in the stringer. It's not too loud, but I don't want to go deaf either. So we're going to go ahead and do the initial cut. And this is just your first lineup. I'm not going to take too much depth out, maybe an eighth of an inch of a cut, if that. And that'll be, that'll be my start. As you can see, the switch again, the slow start's really nice. One thing I'm noticing on my first cut is I'm off a little bit, just a touch to the right. So I'm going to adjust the, the top of the jig very slightly. I'm talking barely. This is where being a craftsman, you want to know kind of the bottom measurement looks pretty good, but I'm going to shift it a little bit as well. Okay, now I'm going to just drop it. I'm going to go a little deeper. So I'm just going to come up a little bit and do another little test run. Make sure I'm on point. Okay, so after a couple little minor adjustments, I feel good about where I'm at. It still was cutting a little bit more to the right. Sometimes the targets, you've got to kind of do this eyeball thing. This is one little step I've learned to get it perfect because guys will be looking at it. So I'm going to move it a little bit more, come back to my plunge router, and I'm going to go ahead and drop it to an inch and a half. to keep it clean too when you're working so I'm just going to give it a little with my hand on the jig okay okay when we get to the actual flange cut I don't want to go too deep right out of the gate 
you have room to build up your resin and your cloth on the fin box, but if I get it too deep and it drops too low, it kind of defeats the whole purpose. So we want to get it flush on the points. That's, my, that's the trick. Another cool feature of this router is it has a locking mechanism and it, it gives you the wrench if you want to adjust the bit at all or remove the bit. And all you got to do, I'm just going to tap this thing out a little bit just to create a little room. And that's it. Make sure it's good and tight. We don't want the bit flying out. starting to see the flange cut so that's the really important step and I haven't gone too deep yet but I'm gonna go a touch deeper just so the edges the, the middle can be deeper but the edges got to be flush so that's why I'm going slow Just do a test fit. So I still want to come down a little bit more. It's fitting nice, but I just want to go a touch deeper so we know we get a good bond. Okay, so now when we feel like we've cut it perfectly and it looks pretty good, it's nice and lined up, flange cut looks good, I'm gonna drop my tester box in here and make sure that we're good and I'm gonna remove the jig. If you get down here low, you'll see what I mean about that's how you want it. Once you build up your patch and you build up your resin, you've got a nice little spot. You want it flush here and here. Okay, I'm really happy with the cut. The box fits perfect, nice and low here, and got plenty of room for resin to build up. I'm gonna mix up my epoxy resin and sink this thing today, so we're ready to glass tomorrow. Okay, so I'm gonna sink this even though it's a poly blank with epoxy resin, it's my preferred resin. I love resin research. Picked this up at Fiberglass Florida. The Ultra 2 is my favorite. It's the brightest, has the most UV inhibitor, and um, results have been great. So for doing one long box is all I'm sinking in this. I'm gonna mix up three ounces of resin and then roughly 1.5 of hardener. Put my bucket on, I tear it, my old trusty scale that I've had for 20 years. Can't believe it still works. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna go to four, just so I have enough. It's always better to have more resin than less. So actually when I do four, instead of doing two, I'm gonna do 1.8, because it's just under two to one mix. So I'm gonna go 5.8. But if you don't have a scale, you can eyeball it. 
and just go two to one. Two resin, one hardener. One thing about epoxy, especially in the winter months, you gotta mix it, mix it, mix it. So I'll mix on it for a couple minutes, and then I'll go ahead and pour some in there, and then I'll mix some more. Okay. Similar to the shortboard boxes, I always sink with a one inch brush. And the reason we do that is because of these vent holes. And if you want a really good connection with the foam and a bond, you want to make sure you get resin through all those holes. So I'll show you my technique. And I just pour at the top, because you got the, the rocker of the tail is going to let it run down. I don't really pour it all in there, but I do a good little amount. And then I come back with my brush and push it up onto the flange and down. Now you can see why I prefer resin research. Really blue, clean epoxy resin. No smell, which is huge for me. One trick I've learned when sinking the boxes, start at the tail and push towards the nose and you'll see it actually start to ooze out. Now, we wanna lift this up. I've got some stuff here that I use to lift the tail so it doesn't all run off like you see it happening now until it kicks. So I'll come back and tr get what I had some excess and I'm just going to clean this whole thing up. I'm ensuring that every one of these little vent holes gets filled with resin so it locks it down cleanly. Okay, now, most important thing about sinking a single fin is making sure it's straight. It's no, nothing's worse than looking down the tail of a board and the fin's crooked. So I'm gonna set it with some tape. So I'm just gonna take some, I got some quarter inch tape, and I'm just gonna set this fin straight. I'm gonna eyeball it because I don't have a 90 degree angle. I have six and four degrees, but that's why the kit comes with a dummy fin. First, I'm just gonna set it on there. Okay, so now that I've got the tape on there, this is where I can make my adjustments. And it looks like to me it needs to go to a touch to the left, so I just come in here and I just move it a, very slightly. Okay, we want this board to go straight and fast and the fin's straight now, so it's good to go. I'm just gonna do another little cleanup paint around and it'll be ready tomorrow for glassing. Okay, so now that the resin's kicked, the epoxy's set, we're gonna go ahead and pull this dummy fin and show you how I set it up for glassing. So the inserts that come in the install kit will keep the box from swelling or pushing closed. So we're gonna go ahead and sink that down and I get it down as far as it goes so you don't sand the top off. So just put that in there and it pops right out with a screwdriver or any kind of dowel or anything. And then the tape I recommend that won't let it seep and you won't get any resin in the box because that's a disaster is this automotive tape. It's three quarter inch you can get from Fiberglass Florida and I swear by it. And it fits perfect. So I just tape it off and then I'll trim it with a razor blade. You just have to watch at the opening for the insert because that's the only spot that's kind of narrow, or wide, I should say. Okay, so once you get your tape down, I always like to put a patch over the entire box and that'll lock it down. I'm gonna put it down like this and then when I pull my cloth, that'll keep everything secure and tight and then a nice bond with the glass and the, and the resin. And that's basically all you have to do. So now that you got the patch set, ready for the cloth, ready for resin, and once you get it glassed and sanded, you'll be ready to rip.